Okay, for this problem, we have a sprinter that explodes out of the starting block with an acceleration of two uh, positive 2.3 meters per second squared, which she sustains for 1.2 seconds. Then her acceleration drops to zero for the rest of the race. What is her velocity at two different points? Okay, so the first thing I would do is draw a little, little number line, a little sketch, because this is one dimensional motion, so we can just draw a sketch. There are two parts to the motion, so I'll put a divider in there. Um, in the beginning, maybe I'll, this is probably the shorter leg of the sprint, so I'll draw the divider over here. And I'm gonna put my variables, define my variables, x0, v0, t0, x1, v1, t1, x2, v2, t2, and we know there's an acceleration here and A2 equals zero. So there's no acceleration there. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll just list out my known variables. V0, T0, uh, X1, V1, T1, X2, V2, T2. All right, I know, I know this is cumbersome doing all this, but I think if, if you do everything explicitly, uh, you can make sure you don't miss anything from the problem. Um, so first of all, oh, I forgot accelerations. Acceleration one, acceleration two. We know acceleration two equals zero because that is this part where she accelerates for this time uh, and then there's no acceleration. We can define the starting point as zero. The velocity we don't, we have to look at the context of the problem. And since the problem says that she explodes out of her starting block, starting blocks, she's starting from rest. So initially the velocity equals zero. Uh, time, uh, well, let's just define the zero point as the beginning of the sprint. So if I draw three little lines, that means I'm defining it as zero. And you could do the same thing with the position, since the position is not necessarily zero, it's just I choose it to be zero. Okay, um, and she has the acceleration of plus 2.3 meters per second squared in the beginning. Now she sustains this acceleration for 1.2 seconds, so that means T1 equals 1.2 seconds. The velocity at that point, we don't know yet, and we also don't know where she is at that point. Where she ends the race, we don't know about that. What is her velocity at the end of the race? Well, probably already know the velocity at the end of the race, but let's just uh, leave it there for now. Uh, leave it as an open question. We'll readdress it in a minute. And we also don't know the time at the end of the race. We don't know much about the end of the race. But part A says, find velocity at t equals 1.2 seconds. So in other words, find v at d, uh, t1, excuse me. Well, the first thing you would do is you would look at your kinematic equations. Kinematic equations, keep those written somewhere so you can refer to them. Now, we have t, we have acceleration, we don't have V final, but we have V initial because V initial is zero, so we can easily find that velocity using this first equation. V final equals V initial plus A um, T. You don't need an initial here or a final because acceleration is not changing. These equations only apply for constant, veloc uh, constant acceleration. So in our case, the final velocity, because we're just looking at the first segment of the race, the final velocity is V1. The initial velocity is V0 plus A T. We also know V0 equals zero because she's starting from rest. So V1 equals A T. And we can put numbers in if you want. V A is equal to, that's actually A1 T, excuse me, because I want to differentiate it from A2. I'll put A1 there. So that's plus 2.3 meters per second squared 
times time, which is 1.2 seconds. And that is 2.76 meters per second. Now part B says, what is the velocity at the end of the race? So find V2 at the end of the race here. Well, we can use that same equation, V final equals V initial plus AT. We don't have time now because we don't know how much time has passed here, but look at this. Um, A2, oh, excuse me. If I rewrite this equation, V2 equals V1 plus A2T, because we're talking about the second acceleration here, that equals zero, so we don't have to worry about the time. We know the velocity here equals the velocity there. V2 equals V1, which equals 2.76 meters per second. Now, I know that logically you could just look at this and say, okay, she accelerates in this portion, and then she runs at a constant velocity the whole time because there's no acceleration. So you could figure that out conceptually. Uh, but I just wanted to show you mathematically that you get to the same answer.